I'm Lucas Schmildiner. I'm uh, part of the third generation of the family-owned company of Intamin. Um, and I'm responsible for the client relationship, key account management here at Intamin. I'm Daniel Schoppen. I'm VP of Design and Development, specifically responsible for all roller coaster layout creation at Intamin. First and foremost, we have a huge variety of experience over the 50 years of our company. We've been family owned the entire time too, so it's built over the generations by my grandfather, my father being now the president of it. And we've built like this a huge variety of, of different kind of attractions over the years, which sets us apart. And we've been pushing the boundaries of what's possible from the beginning. So since the 70s, we've been trying to go whatever over what is possible and making clients' wishes come true. And I think nobody's been able to do that as well as we have over the past 50 years with our breadth of experience that we've had. Yeah. Also here to say, Intermin was known specifically 10, 20 years ago for the record ride, especially on roller coaster side, water ride. And now we are also doing this for sure, but we are also uh, expanding in the direction, the variety, specifically, for example, here on roller coasters, the variety of experiences. Story coasters, for example, multi launch coasters, even one trick pony thrill coasters. But we're not just focusing on the super big, uh, super big designs. For me, every day is totally different. Like, there's not a standard typical day since I'm also involved from my role perspective in a lot of different aspects of the company and also some of the management stuff. And it starts off totally different. It starts usually off with checking, of course, the emails to see what's going on and kind of sorting the priorities of the day and then going into the different meetings where you have to go into. And afterwards, it could also include some kind of client meetings, you know, typical follow up weekly meetings with them or also in kind of team internal meetings that we do in there. So a lot of meeting specific from my perspective. I don't know if Donnie wants to give something to you. For me also, every day is different. You, you are coming in, you don't know what uh, requests are coming in from potential clients. Sometimes from China, we want to have an, a proposal tomorrow and then we need to decide what we are doing. And we need to be quick, we need to be fast, we need to be innovative, but always under under a specific time pressure, but also time pressure here helps to not lose the innovation. You need to be very focused when doing new designs. For me, it's definitely the variety. It's not an LSM coaster or, for example, a multi-dimension coaster. It's a huge variety of rides. Yeah, that's true. So what it's, for example, what we can say uh, we have already announced also by the parks is a flume coaster, um, which goes to uh, Seabird San Antonio. Then we have two straddle systems for the US, also for the uh, Busch Gardens and Seabird parks. And for Europe also, we have roller coasters, but uh, it's more than just one roller coaster and the other. Most of them will be propelled by LSM technology. We have, for example, two multi-launch uh, coasters inaugurating in Europe next year. One is uh, Tutatis in Park Asterix at France. It was heavily delayed due to the pandemic, but now it will open next year. It's really looking great. Also, scening-wise, the ride, ride experience-wise, storyline-wise, and then we have also a very straightforward multi-launch coaster featuring three launches in Madrid, which will be seemed to a Batman vehicle. It will be also located in an origi originally already existing Goss city area. And we also have, uh, yeah, other rides that we cannot tell so much, but uh, here and there they will be popping up. For me also, Tuta Tins will, well, I think, to find the boundaries in Europe of the LSM coast is new. I'm really, really looking forward to that one. And some undefined little projects from a multi-dimensions perspective, but we can't say much more about it. It's been kind of developing over the years. So it used to be very client specific. So they would come with ideas and we would, I mean, we have kind of the motto, you dream it, we can make it into reality, right? That's kind of where we came from. It still is somewhat that way. So a lot of those ideas come from client inputs and everything there, but it's also been shifting towards internal our, our departments as well. I mean, Daniel's team, for example, has ideas coming out with new elements for the coasters. We try to integrate and we proactively go to the clients with those kind of ideas, but we also 
also have some of the R&D department, which will, you know, try to push the boundaries in what's possible. And, and for them, just think about stuff when they have a little bit of time off, which will try to incorporate in some new ride. And if it goes well, of course, the client request will match with something we have in the background, and that will be, of course, the best opportunity to do. So that's what we're trying to push more. And I think the third component, which is getting more and more important, is also other teams. We're trying to get that through the entire company. So everyone who has an idea, just working on it, we have a platform where they want to distribute that. We want to be able to try to use those, make it into a quick idea, get it to the client, and then develop it from there. But it's a lot of you know trial research and, and going into that stuff to get something into action. Most recent is a bit relatively, but when we when we look or when we say most recent is also five ten years, we can definitely say it was a Gringotts coaster for down around here the road for Universal because uh, we delivered everything on this roller coaster, not just the trains, not just the track. We also delivered three unique. Uh, moving track element, the teeter totter, a 3D OF, or a, a curve section which completely tilts unexpectedly forward while the train runs over it. And what here was the biggest challenge, it was not only the pure amount of innovative designs which have to be taken or considered, it was also the uh, harsh time frame, but overall the whole control system. Ringots, even until today, for us is the most enhanced and most complex roller coaster when it comes to control system design. And there we had taken so many new steps, be it a wireless control system, be it power picks up and button. The whole, the whole technology we developed there also helps us nowadays to understand roller coasters, roller coaster control much easier, much better for the future. And just maybe quickly to note there, for us it's always been important that we never walk away from any project. So we finish everything until it's done, until everyone is happy, no matter the cost from our side and what that comes with it, because we are super proud that we get it into action for the client. And we'll take any measure necessary to get there. And that's why some of these projects can cost a lot of resources and stuff in the background, but we're just happy to get it done for the client in some way. Let's say it's, it's uh, the fact that you can uh play around a lot more with the train what you could not do before. 30 years ago or 40 years ago you had a lift hill. Then the launch was inaugurated but you could only more or less launch from standstill. And with the new LSM technologies uh, you can launch from whatever position the train is where you want. Be it from standstill, be it forward backward, you can even launch nowadays vertically up force. And by launching vertically upwards, we introduced our first vertical launch coaster, the real world's first vertical launch roller coaster, because the train is really launched upwards. So it's not just going upwards and losing speed, it's uh, getting even more and more speed by launching up, because we can launch this up to 1.5G. This means we can launch 0.5G accelerating upwards. Well, I mean, what comes closest to what, I mean, we have certain projects, of course, in the making at the moment, of course, that we can't go into more detail, but what comes closest in Movie Park Germany, we have the multidimensional model that kind of incorporates this in kind of a family attraction setting, where they did a really great job of theming that too, with all the show scenes and everything there, but that's the closest, and I would also consider, me personally, Futuroscope, uh, Objective Mars, to be in that type of direction, where they also incorporate a lot of this immersiveness into the coaster experience itself. With multi-dimension coasters, with all these special track elements we can, we can integrate there, you can enhance the story and you can also tell a story which is also potentially non-linear. This is always what makes the multi-dimension coasters. And I think within the next five, six, seven years, we are talking big roller coaster projects, massive ones, uh, a lot of those will come up. Yeah. So for me, very tricky question, very specific <laughs> question, but for me it's Juvelin. It's the most underrated uh, roller coaster yes. family launch type. We inaugurated it eight years ago. It, it, it's, it's experience is, is nine seasons now already at your Sommerland in Denmark. But this coaster is a very special one. You have, you have a specific straddle seating position. You're experiencing a nice launch and afterwards a boost to crazy speed. It goes over 50 miles per hour 
for a family launch coaster crazy with accelerations like oof and then very close to ground but it lacks at one aspect and this was a finale when we designed it we never designed so many straddle coasters before okay we had the one in uh, australia for example which is also very great when it comes to direction uh, changes but the owner here wanted airtime and yes we designed then airtime hills but what we saw at the end especially what we found out later oof, the train is decelerating a little bit too much at the end over those hills Yes, you still feel airtime, especially in the afternoon when the system got a bit hotter, but it's not bringing the idea until the end. So in here, we now redevelop the idea. We, 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 we kept the layout as it is, but we enhanced it. So at the beginning, only details, you will not notice them, but we defined a completely new finale, bringing the aspect of low to ground uh, maneuvers left, right changes, but also combined with airtime to a different level. For me, it's also very easy. Um, it's the Megalite coaster. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and yeah. Uh, the Megalite is so famous in your Summerland. Your Summerland again. Yeah, that's a but, fantastic <laughs> part, though. Yeah. Um, but also in China and also in Japan, north of Tokyo, where we had the Kawazimi ride, directly installed into a lake, but also here. The whole ride was designed for the foundations which were sitting already in the lake. And we came up with such an innovative layout during those times. It was 2008 around. But uh, now you can reimagine and we, I really want to see those compact mini, mini mega coasters also in the US. And I think it's time that we are selling one. But we need to find a client. Yeah, I don't know. That would be great. I don't understand why they have not been sold more. If you go, if you're on that coast and you see also the receptiveness of the people yeah. coming off, it's incredible. Even I mean, they, the client was telling us too. It's still one of his best coasters, and it just combines this great, you know, thrill, but not too much into like something that's kind of affordable and not too huge. It's just it's a perfect mix. For me, until now, the one I was involved in that was very interesting was this whole new Efteling concept that we did. So the the new platform that's going to come out there with their ride, Danse Macabre, is just, I mean, it's fantastic from a, from a storytelling perspective, from this immersive perspective and the ride experience with all these different motions going, you know, with each other, this coin tilt effect of the platform. It's going to redefine in my eyes this whole immersive ride experience to a level that's been unseen before, I think, in, in the industry until now. So getting that into action and also, also working with Efteling, who have like, you know, put so much love and detail into their theming and their park and everything. It's the perfect partner for developing this together. So I'm going to be super proud when that opens up at some point. I have so many favorite <laughs> projects. Unfortunately, I, I cannot tell a lot because most of them are not uh, disclosed at the moment. So, yeah, but uh, what was really challenging and therefore I like challenging tasks. So what was really challenging was to to work out the final layout for the world's longest, fastest and also highest roller coaster, which goes to uh, Saudi Arabia. Okay, it will open, I think, in two or three years, but it's such a long ride. Yeah. It's uh, 15,000 feet long and uh, it will last three minutes. And the challenge here was to design a ride experience where the people are saying when they are going out in the unload, that's a great ride, let's do it again. <laughs> because you can do too much and then overstressing the people in this aspect, especially in the heat, it would not be, would not be great. Remember you saying standing on that cliff looking down the first time and then getting that into action? Yeah, I, just... I, 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 yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, 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 also, I was already at Saudi at the side before the pandemic. And uh, we were standing at the, at the cliff and they showed us exactly the point where they were looking for, for a cliff drop. And you need to imagine this cliff stands approximately 700 feet over the ground where the park is and you are then looking into this valley it's like grand canyon but at the moment was without people later it will be completely uh completely um filled up with features like formula one track the park all our park hotels but it, it it it's a sensation 
which you will never experience anywhere else on a roller coaster because you don't have this option to drop off a cliff. And even standing there and then imagine, oh, in five, six, seven years, I was, we will sit in a roller coaster, accelerating down, down that, and even accelerating, accelerating down that hill. It's like to, to, to crazy speed. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this is uh, really what what is driving, what is driving us, all our development. For sure, it's 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 the later one. Since uh, if you have constraints in the park, walkways, also buildings where you have to fly over somehow, this is this is. Uh, driving the thinking process this is also giving you a better focus what you can do because you cannot do everything if you can do everything in an open field you normally tend to do too much and later you can easily come up with a, with a project which is nice or with a layout which is nice but you're not driving the layout to its limits I mean, there's so many different paths to get into where we are in our industry and as such. And it's such a great industry, of course, to be in. And I think, I mean, from our perspective, we're a very engineering driven company. So usually anything that goes into the, you know, all the STEM uh, kind of backgrounds and anything with engineering definitely will help. And then branching off to doing something within, you know, one of the parks already to get that experience. It's and always hands on a, experience. Yeah, hands on experience from that perspective. That's always a great combination that we're looking for. But uh, in the end, you know, having the background is one thing, but also just being super passionate about what you're doing and we can feel that too. That's the kind of people that we're looking for to employ at our company as most. Yeah. Thanks. Thank thanks, you. Robert. Thanks, Byron. Thanks for having us. Yep. Thank thanks. you.